today is taken from the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. The readings this morning come from the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. And the epistle is taken from the first epistle of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brethren, we give thanks to God always for you all, continually making a remembrance of you in our prayers, being mindful before God and our Father of your work of faith and labor and charity and your enduring hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We know, brethren, beloved of God, how you were chosen. For our gospel was not delivered to you in word only, but in power also, and in the Holy Spirit, and in much fullness, as indeed you know what manner of men we have been among you for your sakes. And you became imitators of us and of our Lord, receiving the word in great tribulation with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became a pattern to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia, for from you the word of the Lord has been spread abroad, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we need say nothing further. For they themselves report concerning us how we entered among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await from heaven Jesus, his son, whom he raised from the dead, who has delivered us from the wrath to come. And the Holy Gospel is taken from St. Matthew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. At that time, Jesus spoke this parable to the crowds. The kingdom of God in, of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field. This indeed is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it grows up, it is larger than any herb and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and dwell in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and buried in three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables, and without parables he did not speak to them, that what he spoke, but what, what, but what was spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the foundation of the world. Thus for this Sunday's Holy Gospel. My beloved people, first things first this morning. Uh, yesterday afternoon, Miriam Roy in Montgomery, who attended our chapel of Our Lady of Lourdes down there, died. Let us pray for the repose of her soul. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May her soul and all the souls of the faith of the parted, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. As Benedictines, we today celebrate the Feast of St. Gertrude. In the Roman Church, the custom was to celebrate it on the day yesterday, actually, which we said it in our bulletin last week that was yesterday, but for us it's today. Now, why this difference crept in, I'll not be able to answer at the moment, but nevertheless, we celebrate St. Gertrude today on the 17th. Here, about two or three weeks ago, I mentioned something about our uh, postcards 
in the vestibule of the church. And I must have scrubbed the vessel too clean and uh, broke it because I think all of you were afraid to take these and just took one very carefully and that was it. I did not quite mean it that way. If you want more cards, they are there and you take them and we will replace them uh, until we can't replace them anymore. So they are there for our use and make use of them, my beloved people. As I said uh, just a moment ago, today is the feast, the Benedictine observation of the feast of St. Gertrude. I still remind us, let us be reminded of November being dedicated to the holy souls in purgatory. Let our very best prayers go to them. And of course, be reminded of the, uh, of the deaths that took place uh, because of the big storm we had, I think it was last Sunday night. Please remember these people. And also be reminded, my beloved people, and first of all, be grateful. Be very grateful that we did not suffer. This lamp, as you see burning over here, uh, the little white lamp there, uh, is what we call the storm lamp. It burns perpetually for us. And it is in petition that Almighty God protect us from the ravages of storm. So be reminded that this is always burning for all of us in this church and in solemn petition to Almighty God. Now over the last several months, we lit a second lamp, which is on the other side, and that is dedicated to the uh, to asking Almighty God to protect us and those that we love from the ravages of attack from the ravages of terrorist attack. And from all, from all that is being said, we can look forward to a very, uh, a, very, a very thrilling, a very active, a very interesting, a very whatever uh, future in this area that we so have no security and we do not know what will happen, where it will happen, or not how it will happen. And so this lamp is in protection of us, that we will be protected from such dangers and deaths. The main way people say, but what shall we do? There's only one thing to do, and that is to keep ourselves always and always in the state of perfect uh, 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 grace and using the sacrament of penance uh, whenever it is necessary and even when it's not necessary and asking Almighty, or reminding Almighty God that we are doing all that we know how. The calendars now are available again for next year. I had something else I wanted to mention, but it has escaped my mind. If it appears to me, I will, I will bring it out. At any rate, this is today, next Sunday, is the final Sunday after Pentecost, and another liturgical year is over. And we prepare ourselves for the great and wonderful feast of, of, of Advent, but in the preparation of the year to come, let us take a quick look at the year that has passed by us. And I think everybody will agree how quickly it did pass by. But it is nevertheless the end of that which we began a year ago. Let's look back. We had certain ideals that we wanted to achieve over the past several months. Let us examine our consciences. Let us examine our consciences carefully, objectively, honestly and genuinely. Let's see if we did, in fact, make any progress. That we may have tried to make progress and may have failed, which is oftentimes likely. 
that doesn't mean that we did not make the effort, at least. It is in the effort that we make as best we can that Almighty God will judge us. Let us carefully look back into our past over the past year to see if we did live up to what we had hoped to achieve. In today's epistle, or rather I should say in today's gospel, a blessed Lord's parable, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and buried in three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. As we say so often, we here do not engage in dialectics. We here do not engage in apologetics. We know there are serious problems everywhere. Everywhere you look, there's a serious problem. Our families, our localities, our country, our church. There are problems everywhere. And we run about very confusedly wondering what are we to do about it. Some of us take the path of trying to persuade, of trying to argue, of trying to prove, of trying to insist that this is the way it's done. This is the way it's always been done. These are the arguments. These are the sermons. These are the books. These are whatever, whatever, whatever that we go to to prove. We've got to prove. To prove that what we're doing is correct. Now, beloved people, we don't have time to waste on proving. In the proving of things, what does the proving of anything have to do with the salvation of our immortal souls? So I have spent hours and days and weeks and months to find and to ferret out and to seek and to search and to read and research. And I make myself comfortable that what I am saying is correct and nobody can question me. You know, that's the attitude we take. So what? So we're correct. Or so you're incorrect. Or so anything. But what has that got to do with whether I have made my soul? Just a fragment more pleasing and acceptable to God. That's all of it. There's nothing else. That's all of it. In our bulletins, we do not argue. We don't have time for that. We don't have the inclination for that. We do not point fingers at anybody. It's not for me to decide. It is not for me to make judgment as to who goes to heaven, who goes to hell. I don't know, nor do you. That's none of my business, nor is it yours. The only one who has the answer to that question is God himself, alone. 
nobody else. So what do we do? I know you say this is not, a, when our families, our households, whatever, our homes are not monasteries, we take that into consideration. Absolutely. Of course, your homes are not monasteries or convents. But your homes are where children of God live. And to put it bluntly and frankly, any place where children of God live, whether it's in a monastery or a convent or a Christian home, Such a place is a sanctuary, isn't it? Isn't it? We promote the interior life. That's all that matters. No, nothing else that we take time out to consider whether it is intellectual or cultural or scientific or financial or anything is of no consequence. The trouble is we do not understand that of no consequence. And we put importance in the things that are of no consequence. And as I think it's in today's bulletin, that all we do and all we struggle for feverishly are the gold medallions that we received for this or that or the other accomplishment in life. That's stupid, isn't it? If these gold medallions were to be our possessions for all time, or really, for all eternity, that probably could be looked upon as at least halfway sensible. But at the moment of death, who gets these gold medallions? Do I get to keep them? Are they mine? But look at all of the fuss and the furor and the energy and everything that goes with me as I go out and work, 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 work for that gold medallion. To the exclusion even of God himself. And we even call upon him very earnestly sometimes. Dear God, please let me win. Please, please God, I have to win. I must win. I must keep up my self-respect. I must keep the self-respect of those who look upon my abilities to win and to be successful. I must have that gold medallion. My beloved people, how flimsy that is. It is only in the, in the, in, in the, in the development, it is only in the development of my soul that is the only achievement that I must seek out with all my might. But as I said earlier, this is not, I'm not asking you to develop monasteries in your homes. It is just, if I may say, the divine way of living on earth. And have we not traveled to Nazareth? And do we not travel to Nazareth at every opportunity? And the Nazareth house, 
lives the divine way on earth. I will repeat that. The Nazareth house lives the divine way on earth. Now, you would suppose then that if Nazareth, the Nazareth house, lives the divine way on earth, that their lives in there, their living in that house, the house itself, would explode with singularity. It didn't, did it? Nobody even knew it was there. Did they? Later on, as you know, when they saw this young whippersnapper get up and start telling the teachers, hey, this is not true, this is not right, this is wrong, 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 this is the way. When they saw this young whippersnapper, as far as they were concerned, they said, who is he? Where did he come from? What's his background? What are his credentials? Oh, um, he, he, I think, uh, he, I think he's, uh, he's that carpenter's son down the street. That's the only thing they could say about Jesus Christ. That's how unsingular they were. Yet, they lived the divine way on earth. And so must it be with us. Did they not live the ordinary life? Did not St. Joseph live the ordinary life? Did he not engage in his enterprise where he could gain, could earn uh, his living to feed the other two? Did not our blessed Lord himself deliver that which they produced. And did not, did not our blessed Lord himself have to receive and be the recipient of all the rebuff that undoubtedly he must have received because the product they wanted was late or inferior or improper or not well done and so on and so on. And then after all of the rebuffing was over, he, Jesus Christ, The second person of the Blessed Trinity, Almighty God himself, of the creation of the world, creating all things, he, Jesus Christ, had to reach out his hand and ask for payment. Is this not true? Is this not correct? And in the living of this family, we can find every vicissitude, every circumstance, every situation, everything that you and I are faced with day after day after day. And that these individuals, one, two, three, showed us, like this we spoke of this, which the, the woman put the leaven in, some, in, 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 uh, in three measures of flour till it all became leaven. And look, look, my beloved people, what that insignificant, not at all distinctive house of Nazareth, that little speck of leaven. Look what it has done. It reached this leaven throughout 
the length and the breadth and the depth and the height of this entire globe. And every man on earth today knows, though he may reject, but he knows of this place. Now, is it up to me to reject? No, it's not. Once I have been, uh, once, uh, once I have been met with that which is true, I'm no longer at liberty to reject. I might take the liberty to reject, but that does not mean that I have the liberty to reject. I must accept the truth. So we develop in this, uh, the, the clock stopped. I guess it's all right if the clock stopped. Um, if we reject that which we must uh, live by, the divine way, then we have to answer for it. It is the Christian way. It is the Catholic way. This is all we're interested in here from this point. So now as we are beginning to get ready to approach the season of Advent, and this year we'll again pass out the little grains of wheat for the little children, but we also have the grains of wheat for the grown-ups. And of course next Sunday we will get the instruction on the grains of wheat. For the grown-ups to indulge in this little practice is not foolish, is not fantasy, it is not demeaning for a great big muscular man or woman, if women are muscular, to indulge in this little pious activity which in some way brings us that little fraction closer to observing that which belongs to God, then why not? Why not? We're all sinners, all of us, and we're all trying to save our immortal souls. And it is our duty to try to reach our eternal goal as best we can. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and buried in three measures of wheat until all of it was leavened, my beloved people.